Good evening, good evening. What's going on, everybody? Here I am, back once again. <laughs> with another Pro Wrestling Talk video brought to you by Blitzball Champ Gaming here on the U to the Tube. I'm your host, Jason Ingram. So, I know this is probably like the third or fourth or fifth video that, that I've done while still rocking my stars stardom shirt. But, came across yet another event. This time, I got a chance to watch it live. And this was Tokyo Joshi Pro Wrestling 2023. Their first event of the year. Took place January 3rd at Corquin Hall. And this was an excellent event. And it was jam-packed with eight matches. And I was able to catch the, the live stream of this with English commentary, of course, done by Balian Aiki and Chris Brooks, which, you know, I definitely love that duo. But before I get into going over the card, they made a big, big, a banger of an announcement. So... All the Tokyo Joshi Pro Wrestling fans over there in the West Coast, specifically Los Angeles, California, well, you are in luck. Mark your calendars for March 31st of this year, 2023, because Tokyo Joshi Pro Wrestling will be coming to the Globe Theater in Los Angeles to have their first ever show in the United States. Tokyo Joshi Pro Wrestling. TJPW Live in Los Angeles, March 31st, 2023 at the Globe Theater in Los Angeles, California. Wow, what an announcement. And you know what? I figured it was a matter of time because I don't know if y'all knew, they were originally supposed to have their first show back in 2020, uh, back um, in, I believe it was supposed to be in April and it was actually supposed to be in Florida. It was originally going to be in Florida, but of course, the pandemic ruined all those plans. So I figured it was only a matter of time. It, it, it took three years, but you know what? I think that's a big, ginormous piece of news. TJPW is finally coming to the States, and hopefully it won't just stop at Los Angeles. Hopefully they'll make their way to the East Coast as well. But hey, this is a start. This is a start. This is big news, y'all. So all the TJPW fans out there in the West Coast over there in California, definitely mark your calendars for this. You don't want to miss it. I know they just announced it, but this is a big opportunity. Their first show in the United States. You don't want to miss it. Keep an eye out. March 31st. March 31st. It's a... Uh, it's actually, I believe it's on a Friday. Let me look. It's actually, oh, it's on a Friday. It's on a Friday. So you might want to get your PTO in. <laughs> but March 31st, Friday, Globe Theater in Los Angeles, TJPW Live for the first time. Anyway, let's get into the matches. We had some good juicy matches. We had eight total matches. We had three title matches. But starting off, uh, we had a singles match. We had Yuki Aino taking on Himawari, uh, who is a newcomer, a TJPW rookie, making her debut, actually. She actually got on the mic um, at the beginning of the show. But yeah, Himawari is making her in-ring debut at this event. And sure enough, she was in the first match against Yuki Aino. And you know what? I thought she did pretty well. I thought she did pretty well. Um, I definitely like her her gimmick. I definitely like her, her ring gear. You know, had the colorful, like, yellow and orange sort of ring gear. I really like her ring gear. So, um, was definitely digging Himawari, and I felt like she put in a good effort. I really do. Um, but Yuki Aino was just too much for her and was able to defeat her um, after hitting a reverse DDT and going for the 1-2-3. But still, not bad for Himawari's first match. Not bad at all. Not bad at all. 
Okay, next up we had a tag team match that I actually really enjoyed. Um, this was the team of Moka Miyamoto and Jurya Nagano, uh, a team that I've become a big fan of lately, especially Jurya Nagano, taking on the team of Arisu Endo and another newcomer, uh, Wakana Uehara. Now, interesting thing uh, that they talked about on commentary is that um, Wakana Uehara had recently done, I think it was a exhibition match. Um, I don't remember who they said it was, it was against, but she did an exhibition match, and then pretty much they liked what they saw, and they gave her a contract. Gave her a contract, so this was also her official TJPW in-ring debut. So, hey, two back-to-back in-ring -back debuts. I love it. <coughs> Excuse me. But you know what? I definitely enjoyed this tag team match. Um, ever since Moka Miyamoto and Jerry and Nagano teamed up, I mean, they both are very proficient in karate. And you know what? They, they gel so well together as a tag team. And you know what? Wakata Uihara, I was very impressed with her chain wrestling. She had some really good chain wrestling in this match. And it really just, it, it, it makes me keep an eye on her. And just how she was working the ring, it, it looks like she trained really hard for this match. And honestly, I think she did really, really good. She, she shows promise. She definitely shows promise. And of course, Arisa Endo did her thing as well. But you know what? I really enjoyed this match. You know, Wakana looked very promising. And of course, you know, Mocha, Juria loved them as a tag team. And as a matter of fact, Mocha was able to get the submission victory on Wakana by uh, getting her to submit to pretty much like a modified Cobra twist. I thought it was pretty cool. Kind of had her down to a knee and did the Cobra, cobra twist. Thought it was really interesting. Kind of had her other arm trapped under her leg. So I thought that was pretty cool. But Mocha Miyamoto and Jury Nagano pick up the victory, submission victory in the second match. Really good match. Definitely enjoyed it. Okay, next up, we had a trios match. We had a trios match. We had the team of Mahiro Kiryu, Kaya Toribami, and now Kakuta taking on the team. <laughs> of Raku, Palm Harajuku, and Haruna Neko, which, of course, anytime you have Haruna Neko in a match, you're, you're going to expect to see cat claws and cat scratching. And, and, of course, when you have Palm Harajuku, you're going to have all the silly shenanigans. So this match definitely was no different. But very entertaining match definitely a, a entertaining match i felt like all six ladies were showcased very well especially palm as usual but now kakuta ends up picking up the victory for her team over haruna neku by hitting the um pretty much like a fireman's carry into a stunner almost kind of like austin theory's uh, uh a town down um but yeah good match very entertaining and yeah, good trios action there. Okay, next up we had a special singles match uh, between the big kaiju, Shoko Nakajima, and of course the ever so funny and goofy and entertaining Hyper Misao. And this was in the form of a bunny ladder match. A bunny ladder match. This was really interesting. So the way this worked, they had three stuffed bunnies suspended from a rope that you gotta use a ladder to reach. Two of the bunnies are dangerous, and one of the bunnies is pretty much the prize, the winner, the winning bunny. So, these two ladies went at it in this ladder match, and it was back and forth a good bit. When it came down to it, Shoko Nakajima was able to pull down the first bunny, and she ended up getting one of the dangerous bunnies, which turned, which added lumberjacks to the match. So not only was it a ladder match, but grabbing that bunny added the lumberjack rule to it. 
And the Lumberjacks ended up coming in the form of Arisu Endo, Himawari, Yuki Aino, and Mahiro Kiryu from the previous matches. And they came out with, like, bunny hats and, and hammers. <laughs> and pretty much whenever Shoko Nakajima or Hyper Misao was outside of the ring, they got hammered to death. And it was just, it was just really funny. Really, really funny. Um, Hyper Misao actually was able to get an opening to take the ladder and grab uh, a second bunny, which she ended up grabbing the other dangerous bunny, which ended up adding the rule for weapons free. So all weapons and objects became available and legal, which kind of surprises me being that it's a ladder match you would think that it's already a no dq but but anyway anyway it is what it is and we saw all sorts of stuff we we originally had hyper misao come out on a bicycle shoko nakajima coming out on a scooter and they even did a a joust spot or more like a chicken spot and they just drove at each other but of course hyper misao got the best of that exchange uh, we saw <laughs> we saw all sorts of objects. We saw a trash can full of gotcha balls. And we even saw a a, a tub full of of kaijus. A bunch of action figures of like Godzilla's. There was like a whole bunch of Godzilla's big kaijus just poured out of that tote. And <laughs> This was such a wacky match. Such a wacky match. But you know what? It was very entertaining. I mean, the Lumberjacks were getting involved. All those kaijus scattered all over the ring. Even Shoko Nakajima got dropped onto them. Even with a few of those Godzilla figures standing upright. And you know, those are like spiky. You know what I mean? And then even Hyper Misao had, a whole, had the whole trash can of gotcha balls dumped on her. And it was just, it was it was a very entertaining match. Very entertaining, very funny match. And when it all came down to it, that final bunny, which by the by default is the winning prize bunny, both ladies up on the ladder together, both were able to get their hands on the bunny and unhook it with both of their hands on the bunny. And therefore, the referee deemed them both the winner and decided to deem this match a draw. So they both got the bunny. I guess there wasn't really a prize, but both got their hands on the bunny, both brought it down. Therefore, this match was ruled a draw. So, very entertaining match though. Even though it ended in a draw, it was very entertaining. I was laughing so much during this match. And as the match, after the match ended, the, the Lumberjacks ended up chasing out <laughs> both competitors to the back. It was, it was so silly. It was really, really silly. Okay, next up, we had a really, really big, big match with a big, big prize. This was the number one contender battle royal to decide the next challenger for the Princess of Princess Championship, the promotion's top championship. This was a six-woman battle royal, which means you can win, you can eliminate the others by pinfall, submission, or throw them over the top rope. Your six competitors uh, were Mizuki, Maki Ito, Rika Tatsumi, Yuki Kamifuku, Hikari Noah, and Suzume. So those are your six ladies. Now, they entered in at different intervals. So the first two ladies to start out were Hikari Noah and Maki Ito. So those two ladies started out. Then Yuki Kamifuku was the third one to enter. The fourth one was Rika Tatsumi. And then we had our first elimination of the match as... Um, Yuki Kamifuku was able to eliminate Hikari Noah by kicking her over the top rope as she was on the turnbuckle. And then Mizuki was the fifth 
competitor to enter the match. And then we had another elimination as Maki Ito was able to eliminate Yuki Kamifuku over the top rope. And then Suzume was the last to enter to this match. And then the other ladies teamed up and pretty much all together pinned Rika Tatsumi in order to eliminate her. So she's eliminated. And then Maki Ito ended up submitting Suzume. And then it all came down to the final two. Mizuki and Maki Ito. And let me tell you, these two ladies went at it hard. You know, not to take away from the other competitors, because the other ladies were great. I, I love the other ladies. But Mizuki and Maki Ito went hard. I mean, honestly, it really could have gone either way. Could have gone either way. But Mizuki was able to hit the cutie special, that fall away slam pen. To get the one, two, three, and the popping sugar rabbit, Mizuki, is your new number one contender to the Princess of Princess Championship. So, what a win for Mizuki, who came into the match, who, who was the fifth entrant into the match. But, she's the sole survivor, and your new number one contender. Great match. Really, really great match. Okay, now let's let's get into some title matches, shall we? So first up, we have the International Princess Championship. As the champion, Miyu Watanabe defended against Trisha Dora. Now, I really enjoyed this match. Trisha Dora looked really good, and, and I believe this is her, her TJPW debut, which, you know... Trisha Dora has been wrestling a lot in the indies, um, in AEW, and also in ROH. So, Trisha Dora has a good amount of experience. And you know what? This was a good match. This was a really good match. I felt like she was a great matchup to Miyu Watanabe. You know, a little bit bigger than Miyu. And, you know, I, I, thought, it was, I thought it was a really good matchup. And these two ladies went back and forth and... Miyu kind of struggled at first trying to, to do that giant swing, but eventually she was able to, to put Trisha Dora into the giant swing for, you know, a handful of revolutions. But these two ladies really showcased their power back and forth. But when it was all said and done, Miyu was able to get the victory, hitting that, um, I don't know what her finisher is called, but it's pretty much kind of similar to like an over-the-shoulder um, big ending. That's pretty much what it looks like. It's like a, a variation of the of the big ending. But um, if somebody knows the name of, of Miyu Watanabe's finisher, please let me know. Um, but Miyu retains the title. I believe this was her second successful title defense because I believe the first one she actually defended against uh, Moka Miyamoto last year. But... Um, Congratulations to Miyu Watanabe, but you know what? Trisha Dora, she looked really good in this match. She looked really good, and I hope this won't be the last time we see Trisha Dora in TJPW. Next up, we had the Princess Tag Team Championship on the line, and actually a good number of folks that I've talked to were looking very forward to this match. But we had the, the champion, Saki Akai Yuki Arai, defending against the Wasteland War Party in the form of Max the Impaler and Heidi Howitzer. Heidi Howitzer, who I got a chance to um, see live in person um, through DPW um, a handful of shows back, back in the, the middle of the year. But um, actually, it was around the spring. If I remember correctly, it was around spring. But, yeah, so I've gotten a chance to see her wrestle live. But I tell you, even though I'm sure a lot of folks expected this to be one-sided with the Wasteland War Party, you know what? Saki Akai and Yuki, Yuki Arai had a good amount of offense in this match. And many would say that 
even though they were the champions, that they were the underdogs. I mean, of course, it's it's kind of obvious. But they had a good number. They had a good amount of offense in this match, for reals. And you know, even had even got to the point where even Maxie Impaler was trapped in a submission for a while. Looked like she was she was gonna tap out, but. Overall, just Wasteland War Party just wasn't going to be denied these championships. And sure enough, after that double team splash finisher, which I believe they called it the Master Blaster. Somebody correct me if I'm wrong. But Max pins Yuki for the 1-2-3. And we have new... Princess Tag Team Champions. Wasteland War Party have done it. Wow. Wow. So it'll be really interesting to see what kind of run they have. And you know what? I think I think they're going to end up having a pretty strong run. They're, they're a strong team. They're definitely a very strong team. But I think they're going to have a good run with these titles. But congratulations to the Wasteland War Party on capturing TJPW gold. And then we had the main event. Main event of TJPW 23. The Princess of Princess Championship on the line. The champion, the magical girl, Yuka Sakazaki, defended against the pink striker, Miyu Yamashita, also the Pro Wrestling Eve champion. And I have to say, these two put on one heck of a main event to kick off the year 2023 for Tokyo Joshi Pro Wrestling. I mean, just back and forth. The strikes were there. I was really shocked to see Yuka Sakazaki bounce back up after some, taking some of those kicks from Yu Yamashita. I mean, that's what she's known for. She's the pink, pink striker. But you know what? Yuka really brought forth the offense to Miyu Yamashita as well. And definitely this match showed why these two ladies are two of the best in Tokyo Joshi Pro Wrestling. And when it was all said and done, Yuka Sakazaki puts away Miyu Yamashita after a Magical Girl 450 splash to retain the Princess of Princess Championship. And y'all know what that means, right? Y'all know what that means, right? Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. That means we are going to get Yuka Sakazaki defending the Princess of Princess Championship against her best friend and magical sugar rabbit tag team partner, Mizuki, after winning the Battle Royal earlier that night. Who man. Oh, ho, ho, man. I tell you what. Who? I can't wait to see what happens with that. I cannot wait. Like, who man. That's... I hope the buildup for that will be phenomenal. Because already it had been it had been announced that Yuka Sakazaki was gonna be going to the US uh this month and Mizuki also would like to go as well. So we'll probably see them team up in the in the States, maybe through AEW or another promotion. And supposedly it was said that they're going to have the title match at TJPW Grand Princess at the Ariaki Coliseum on March 18th of this year. So that's a pretty big gap for them to really build up a story for this championship match. So I am definitely looking forward to this. The Magical Sugar Rabbits will 
face each other for the top title, the Princess of Princess Championship. Ariaki Coliseum, March 18th. Yuka Sakazaki, the magical girl. Mizuki, the popping sugar rabbit. I can't wait. It's going to be so good. But yeah, great show to open up for um, Tokyo Joshi Pro Wrestling for the year 2023. Also, wanted to talk about another event that was announced. The... TJPW Max Hart Tournament 3, which is a tag team tournament uh, that they've had um, uh, ever since, I believe, 2020. And they just announced the tag teams and the dates of this, of this event. So the tag teams that we have, we have Rewa A.A. Cannon, which is the former... Princess Tag Champions, Saki Akai and Yuki Arai, so they're in this tournament. We got Daydream, which is Rika Tatsumi, Miyu Watanabe. We have 1-2-1-0-0-0-0-0-0, which is Miyu Yamashita and Ma Maki Ito. We have Kyoraku Kyome, which is, <laughs> they just faced each other in this bunny ladder match. Uh, Shoko Nakajima and Hyper Misao. We have free Wi-Fi, which is Hikari Noah and Nao Kakuta. We have the Toyo Mates, which is My Hero Kiryu and Yuki Kamifuku. We have the team of Yuki Aino and Raku. We have Daisy Monkey, which is Suzume and Arisu Endo. We have Moka Miyamoto and Juria Nagano. And we have the team of Haruna Neko and Kayatori Bami. So those are your teams. For the Max Hart Tournament Three, so we got we got ten teams, and for this tournament, and they already have the bracket up as well. So the with the bracket, so the shows will be on January fifteenth. So we'll have the first we'll have the first round uh, January fifteenth. And then they're going to finish up the last bit of the first round and the second round on January 19th. The semifinals will be on January 29th. And then the finals will be on February 11th. So those are the dates for this tournament. So let's look at the matchups that they have. So... In the first round, Toyo Mates, which are Yuki Kamifuku and Mahiro Kiryu, will take on Moka Miyamoto and Juria Nagano. So that's a first round matchup. That'll be on January 15th. We will also have Free Wi Fi, which is Hikari Noah and Nao Kakuta, taking on 1210000000 which is Miyu Yamashita and Maki Ito. That's also will be on the on January 15th. You have the team of let's see. You got Reiwa AA Cannon, which is Saki Akayuki Arai, will take on the team of Yuki Aino and Raku also on January 15th. And then on January 19th, we're going to have the teams of, oh, here we go. We got the team of Koraku Kyome, which is Shoko Nakajima and Hyper Misao taking on uh, Haruna Neko and Kaya Toribami. So that means in the first round, uh, the teams of Daisy Monkey, which is Suzume and Arisu Endo, and Daydream, Rika Tatsumi and Miyu Watanabe, those two teams have first round buys. Those are those are the only two teams with first round buys. So just thought I would mention that. To be honest, it's kind of 
of hard. It's kind of hard to pick what team I think will win this tournament. I mean, I really, honestly, I really, really would love, would love, 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 Moka Miyamoto and Juria Nagano to win this tournament. I would love for them to win this tournament. But, I mean, these teams, these teams are strong. I mean, Saki Akai, you're, you, you're Saki Akai, Yuki Arai, I mean, former Princess Tag Team Champions, strong team there. Daydream of um, Miyu Watanabe, Riki, Rika Tatsumi, that's a very strong team. Um... I could honestly probably see a final four of perhaps Juria Nagano, Moka Miyamoto, uh, Maki Ito, Miyu Yamashita. Probably Rika Tatsumi, Miyu Watanabe, and... I don't know, maybe Hyper Misao and Shoko Nakajima? Those are probably the four teams that I could see in the final four, in, in the semis. But as far as what team I think is going to win, that's tough. But I will be rooting for Moka Miyamoto and Juria Nagano to go all the way. They probably won't. But that's who I'm rooting for. So we'll see what happens. But like I said, the start of this tournament will be January 15th. You also have... Um, so January 15th and January 19th is when they're doing the first and second rounds. January 29th will be the semifinals. February 11th will be the finals. So keep those dates in mind. But... I'm looking forward to this tournament. Looking forward to more TJPW action. But, and like I said, with them having their first United States show end of March, hopefully they won't stop at just the West Coast. Hopefully they'll come over to the East Coast. But, you know, the year just started. You never know what could happen. But, That'll do it for this video. Um, let me know what y'all's thoughts are. Did you enjoy uh, TJPW 23 at Corkman Hall? What'd you think of the card? What'd you think of the matches? What'd you think of the outcomes? Also, are you excited about the Max Hart Tournament 3? What do you think about the announced teams? Who do you think will win this tournament? Let me know what your thoughts are. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, hit that notification bell while you're at it. And thank you so much for watching. For another Pro Wrestling Talk, brought to you by Blitzball Champ Gaming, here on the U to the Tube, I'm your host, Jason Ingram. Hope everybody has a blessed day tomorrow. Enjoy Wrestle Kingdom 17. And I will see y'all in the next video. Peace out.